Hi, well, welcome to Horror for All on Freedom Talk Radio. And my guest tonight is Emily from What the Frick, who does live shows that turns into podcasts that you can listen to on various sites. And I'm going to just let Emily introduce herself. Hello, Emily. How are you? Hi, Mark. I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me come on your show again. You're one of my most favorite hosts that I've ever been on uh, your show. And you've been on you've been on my show, but it wasn't called What the Frick Live. I changed it in June, so uh, you'll need to come back on my show sometime soon. And I know that you do quite a lot of um, in-depth interviews. I've I had a look, and you've got a very good selection. I have. I've been blessed with the selection of people that has come on the show. Actually, uh, there's been very few people I've even had to ask to come on. I get emails daily. I'm booked. Um, I only have one more day available now in December, and I'm looking. Uh, I ended ended the show, which was called Frickin' Frack Friday, um, last year. I ended the show, the very last show of the year, with Steve Deshavi. Unfortunately, he's going to be out of the country this year, or he said he'd come on for the last week, but I'm trying to hold on that spot. I'm going to try to get uh, someone that's pretty well-known that's been doing the paranormal TV shows. I mean, I have a lot of Travel Channel people on there uh, already, people that's been on TV or still is on TV, but I'm hoping to try to get somebody that's been on it, doing it for a very, very long time, that's well-known to do that last Friday in December. Yeah, and I like the various selection you have, and you try to make it like me. You try to make it a bit of fun along the way, with a bit of serious in the middle. Oh, I love to have fun. Yeah, that's what that's what I, I got in. I mean, there's a time and place to be serious too. But um, you know, I want I want the What the Frick Live to be a comfortable place for all the guests and co-hosts. I, I'm rotating co-hosts out every two months. I decided on that. Um, so not everybody has to give up every Friday night. I'm the only one giving up every Friday night. But um, anyway, I wanted it to be comfortable for people to sit down and have a drink because when you're at these locations and when you're doing investigations and when you're doing the, re- the reviews um, of these and you're trying to find answers and help people, it, it is a very serious process. And very few times do you ever get to sit down and enjoy a drink, laugh, Talk about mistakes you've made or, or things that's happened that might be odd or weird and, and just really enjoy each other. So that's what uh, I started that out. Well, I started this out um, for kicks and giggles in the beginning and then I started getting requests. Hey, can I? You know, I, I believe it's every day booked except for two Fridays till till the end of December. But I enjoy I mean, each and every time it says the hour has gone by so fast, and it does, it goes by really fast. Well, that's good. That's, I always think there's a good sign of a good show. If you've had a bit of fun, mm-hmm. and then you think, oh my God, it's the end of the <laughs> I think that... Well, we, I, I... I think it works. Oh, I'm sorry, Mark. That's all right. Come on. Well, I... You know, I, I think so, too. And my co-host uh, the last two much, months is Jay Miles, and he has his own show called Vanishing Gates, which he just did his 100th episode. So he's been doing this for quite a few years. And he, he does a little he, – he's super smart. Uh, I really look up to him. Um, he's brilliant in a lot of, like, technical er- areas that I, I'm not – or scientific areas that I'm not uh, that strong in. Uh, so we balance each other out, and I'm really going to be sad when – he leaves the end of July. We have two more, two more uh, Facebook lives with him, and then I have Robin Nelson coming on that has the um, the Wrestle podcast and the uh, Paranormal Files Thirteen podcast that he does, and he's going to be my co-host for two two uh, months. But you know, I've really enjoyed doing this, and I never dreamed it would be like this whatsoever. I used to be a co-host for a radio show on Paramania Radio, but it, I was a fill-in, uh, so I wasn't on there regular. I, I was there when they needed somebody or there at the very end. I, w- I was on there every week for six weeks, but um, other than that, I haven't really done much, and I'm learning a lot along the way, and I appreciate everybody's input and guidance. That um, And I, I kind of have a surprise. We can end, end the show tonight 
tonight, Mark, on an honest surprise that I can tell everybody oh, about the podcast okay. here soon. Well, um, uh, also, um, we were going to try that idea about the um, spirits in the in the um, films, but we never got around to doing it. No, we never did. No, I was so bummed out about that. I saw that. I was working on a project, um, uh, Haunted Louisville, uh, which I have part one and part two up on YouTube, but I was working on that project, and every time I'd go into that Louisville file, that movies, it was like movies, L-M, is like the files right next to it, and every time I go into that Louisville file, I'd see that movies thing, I was like, oh my gosh, we've never done that. Just, I don't, I just ha- didn't have time, I've got busy, and it's hard enough for me to sit down and watch a movie that I really want to watch, let alone something to do, I hate to say this, it kind of sounds lazy, but something to do to for research, you know? I mean, it, it's a great idea. I still would like to do it. I just don't know when. I work two jobs. So well, it's hard. a trouble. When, you, when you're working, as you do, and you've got, you've got a, a child and a very poorly dog to look after, it, it, it fills your day up. Yeah. It does. Days go by so fast. This summer's gone by so fast. You know, it's back to school in four weeks, and i, I got to start going to Walmart or wherever I need to go to get my son's back-to-school stuff already because it will be sold out. I'm like, I cannot believe the summer has gone by so fast. Where, where, where would you plan to do, go to the... If you had, a, like, a, an ideal wishbowl, where would be the perfect place you'd like to go and hence that they'd say, E.R., Emily, you can have a whole month investigating here at your pleasure. Oh, the Stanley Hotel. The Stanley Hotel by, by, by every inch of my being, yes, the Stanley. Because, um, first of all, I, I've been there four times. Uh, second of all, I, I've been drawn to this place since I was a young kid and didn't even know that Stephen King wrote The Shining there until I was like in my late teens. Or early 20s one and um, I don't know the first it was on my bucket list listen to this finally see the place when I was let's see how old I'm not going to give away my age on the radio hold on now I'm going to tell you my age uh, let's just say early 30s okay and I pulled uh, I was I was with a co-worker and we pulled into the parking lot I was I was a vice president of operations for a crude oil, oil hauling company. And we were hauling a lot of oil out of there in Greeley in Fort Collins, Colorado. Well, uh, I'm going to be in Colorado. I'm going to go see the Stanley Hotel. So I remember pulling into that parking lot there for the first time, and I cried in that lot. I, I don't know if I personally believe in past lives or anything like that, but if there was one for me, then I believe I had something to do with the Stanley Hotel because it just felt like home. It felt like I've been there before. I knew places that, you know, the first time you go to a location and stuff you're a stranger to, but it felt home, and I knew some of these places. Like, I knew where doors were that that were – it was just the strangest, weirdest thing. And I actually got F.O. Stanley on camera the first time I was there. I remember I was taking pictures of the mirrors in the billiard room, and we went back and debunked it. Like, they believe it is F.O. Stanley in the mirror, and it was on display at the Stanley Hotel for a while. I don't know if it is now. Last time I've been there was in 2015, so it's been four years. But, um, you know, I remember taking pictures in the, in the mirrors, and I took 72 frames of this room, and I was looking in the mirrors, and I said, F.O. Stanley, I just want to see you. Please let me see you. And... You know, obviously I didn't see anything there. I was taking these pictures with my camera on my phone. Well, a few days had passed, and my coworker that was with me said, hey, did you ever look through these pictures? And I was like, no, I didn't. And he said, here, let me look at them. So he's looking, he's looking, and he's like, what the heck is this? And he threw the phone, and so I started looking at it, looking at it. It's on my website, actually. You can go to um, www.wtfricklive.org. That's Frick, F R I C K live.org and um, it, there's a tab up there that says the Stanley Hotel and uh, we debunked it. I, I went back the tour guide remembered me from my accent my Kentucky accent and he got goosebumps all over him. I got goosebumps. We tried to, we had to figure out where this person might be standing in that room and if, if it reflected in the mirror like it did it would have been about 6 feet 
or so, but I believe it was six feet, it might have been seven feet, behind the tour guide. And that 72 frames that I took, nobody was behind the tour guide whatsoever, and we were all lined up against this wall where you can see in the picture where the tour guide is talking to us, and then we just curve around into the other room. So I actually got F.O. Stanley on uh, camera, which is only, I've only got captured two things on camera my whole entire life doing paranormal inve uh, investigations and things, so... Hmm. So, um, what are you working on at the moment, then? At the moment, I'm working on two things. Uh, well, three things, really. The one I you is with David Pierce Rodriguez with Prism Paranormal. Uh, this was last year, and, and uh, life got busy, so... Uh, we were at the Mid-South Paranormal Convention in Louisville, and we decided to stay in a haunted Airbnb. Well, we didn't know it was going to be haunted, but it was at the Palace Theater. The Palace Theater is haunted. So, and it was probably one of the most, um, gosh, I say this a lot now, most haunted. Everywhere I go, I get lucky, though, I guess. Um, Airbnbs that we stayed in was room 402 at the Palace Theater in Louisville, and we had poltergeist activity there, shadow figures, voices. I have part one up, which kind of talked about our personal experiences in there. I, these are very short clips. I've been trying to keep it at least six or seven minutes under uh, for YouTube. We talked about the tapping, the door, the door clanging. You could also hear somebody walking up and down that hallway at nighttime. Um, we got a lot of EVPs in that room or in, in that Airbnb. Listen, I, I was so creeped out there that I ended up sleeping out on the couch and not that bedroom. I could not sleep in that bedroom. It, it, I always felt like somebody was standing over me. So I slept out there on the couch. And uh, part two is actual, the video that we used was my cell phone filming and got some EVPs straight from the cell phone. And then I, I think I added a couple EVPs in there that was, that was from a recorder during that time that we were recording video. And that's part two. But part three, we have connect footage. We have shadow figure stuff coming out. We have uh, more really creepy EVPs going on. Um, and then I think part three is just going to be extras. Yeah, because you, you, do, you do very good quality EVPs. I will admit that you, you, you can definitely hear them very clearly. Yeah, so you, you may have to you have earbuds or headphones to listen to some of these. But um, I, yeah, I've been I've been pre pretty blessed. I've done this for 18 years. I use a lot of I listen. There's a ton of I get a ton of. If a place is going to be haunted, I'm confident within the first five minutes I'll get it. But I'm working on too is the Culbertson Mansion in New Albany, Indiana. David and I went there. Um, this this might be put up by next week because I got to do a lot of voiceover over overlays and like that, but that was William Culbertson, and, and here, here's the deal with this. I'm telling you, it's one of the best EVPs I've ever captured in the basement. I'm not going to tell you what it is right now, but after coming home, and I've saved all these files, and it's been a year later, I start researching the Culbertson Mansion, and I found out some things about that place that I never even dreamed happened. There was a dentist there in the 1930s that murdered and slaughtered his whole family in that house. Oh, and there was a dead bot. There was a dead body in almost every room. And down in the basement, he had some really sketchy things where he they thought they he tortured some of his patients because it was an in-house dentistry, and had secret chambers and stuff. The basement was probably just haunted in the in the home. But um, this will just be part one. I, it, it'll be over ten minutes long. I hate to do that, but I didn't want to put it out in two parts. But it's the Culbertson Mansion, and uh, we just did a surprise visit in the middle of the day had an amazing tour guide, and then he, he he didn't tell us that part about the dentist, but he told us about, you know, the desks in the house and why the house was built and all, all the shifts um, in the families that lived there and how they're restoring the place. It's a beautiful home, and uh, William Culbertson was the richest man in Indiana. Uh, he did a lot of grain trades and river trades with uh, flour and, and uh can't remember it all now, but uh, it's going to be really good, some good clips in there 
from where we investigated and, and really some really, really, really good EVPs. Do you still go out and... It was um, on my bucket list, too. Do your um, locations in between? Well, obviously, as I said, you've got your family life and your work life, and obviously you have to earn money to because pe- anybody you think you're going to be rich being a paranormal investigator ought to be get go into a wall somewhere and be shot. <laughs> well, I I am helping a family in Paintsville right now. It's um, it was supposed to be on a TV show this week, and unfortunately, the husband backed out at last minute. And I, I kind of expected it, but you know, the producer did what all she could do. I could do, you know, and the wife did all she could do too. Um, and it, it happens a lot too. Um, uh, there's been plenty of opportunities where I've been able, to, been you know, could been on a show. And stuff, and then people back out at last minute. I can't imagine how many turndowns you get uh, doing this, especially if you're going to be on a nationally recognized television show. But I still am helping the family out there. Um, I have a lot of my EVPs of this location called Paintsville, Kentucky Residential, um, on my SoundCloud, which is soundcloud.com backslash frick and A-N-D frack paranormal. And uh, it's There's a lot of things going on in this house, and here's what's interesting. I talked about this on a show a couple weeks ago, uh, that it's probably one of the scariest EVPs that I got. The lady and I, the homeowner, it was just us two in the whole house, and she did have a little nightlight out in the hallway. And the bathroom, it was kind of, it was very long. It was like more rectangular than square or anything. It was super long. And I'm facing outside, looking out into the hallway. She's facing me, so her back is turned to the hallway. Well, I see this shadow figure walk past the door, and it's all on audio recording, and I said, I just saw a shadow man walk past the door. I said, I didn't tell out to go see it, and as soon as I walked out in the hallway, my heart, like, started beating really fast, and I said, my heart is beating fast, and the homeowner, she's, her name's Courtney, she said, yes, my heart's beating fast, too, and I have the EVP. It's so spooky, because I'm right behind you. Wow. The man's voice. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And the house is super haunted. I had a I had a um, thing with a lady named Susan. This is crazy too. Uh, I used Ghost Box, which I've kind of kind of not dealt with Ghost Box that much anymore. I'm just really old school now. I just go straight EVPs. I wear my amplified earbuds when I investigate, so I hear things a hundred times louder than anybody else. And I usually mark things, and, it, and it's there. And so um, but I use the ghost box in this house, and I asked for what's the name of the person there. Well, at that time, I didn't hear it. This was a Friday. And then Sunday, I work doubles on Saturday and Sunday at my other job. So I didn't have any time to review that weekend of what, what we, um, I investigated. So Sunday evening, I get a text message from the homeowner, Courtney, and she said, I did some further investigations of this house. She goes, I found out that there was a lady that that passed away in the home. She passed away June 6th of 1956, and her name was Susan Rivers. And she had three sons. And she goes, we looked up all of her sons' names to see if we could talk to any of them, and they're all, they're all deceased as well. This lady was born in, like, 1886 or something. So, um, anyway... So Monday evening, I decided to start reviewing this this location. So on the ghost box, I said, what's your name? And it goes, Susan, Susan, just like that. So I hear Susan. I'm like, oh, my goodness. So I, you know, I put it up on my SoundCloud. I send it to the homeowner. She, she hears it, too. Well, listen to this. The next morning, I get up to go to work, and I get behind a van that says Susan 3 on the last plate. Yeah, so here it gets even better. So then I'm just out there a few weeks ago, and it's right after Memorial Day. Well, they said that they were sitting there, and all of a sudden this big, big, you know, mower comes in, and it mows down all this yard and stuff, and they knew that there's a graveyard on the property, which is about half a football field away, up on this big, huge hillside, okay? So this tractor comes in, and it gets all this grass down and stuff for Memorial Day weekend so people can come visit these graves. I asked them if they went up there, and they said no. So when I was there, we went up there. Guess who's buried on the property? Susan Rivers. Wow. I think there's definitely yeah, a sign there. Somebody definitely, definitely wants to 
how um well they always say that people stay behind because they need to sort something out but i'm not too sure if that's true or not i don't know if it's true or not because i believe there's all kinds of different spirits beings here i don't think heaven is, is as far as people think it is and um Right now, too, I, I, I believe even when you pass away, you don't go directly to heaven. You go to a place called Abraham's bosom, and, um, and and you don't go directly to hell. There's no if you're a Christian, you believe in the Bible. There, everybody believes in different things, but you know Jesus comes back, and and, and there's going to be one judgment. You don't get judged now and then get judged again later. There's going to be one judgment, and then that's when you know it's supposed to be casted into the lake of fire and all those things. So I, I believe you go to a holding place. Now, I think Abraham's bosom is, is kind of like heaven, but it's not as magnificent as, as you would describe, but it's a peaceful place. Also, hell is a place called Shoal, and it, it, it's kind of like a shadowed, misty place, I would, I would think, or gray area that, that these people go to, too. I, and I don't know if they really understand where they're at, at this moment, but, you know, uh, if you're reading the Bible and, and you're a Christian, and I respect everybody and how they believe, this is how I believe, you know, when Jesus comes back, it says the dead rise first, and then those that remain will meet him in the air. So, uh, you know, I, I don't think heaven is as far as, as what people think. think I, you, you, Sorry, Mark, like, I didn't mean like, to go on like that. <laughs> you know what you made you sound, sound I didn't mean like? I did go on, on like that. That's all right. It made it sound like a, like a refugee camps. Refugee camps? Yeah, it made uh, it... I, not like not like not like the German German Nazi camps. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean like no. The, the, like the holding bays that you have over in America and we have over here. We have it because they try. People try to come across the um, uh, sea, the channel, to come and uh, live over here illegally. Oh, we got that here too. Um, the the Cubans, you know, the refugees from Cuba, which I, I love Cuba, but uh, I'd like to visit there one day. I, you know, it is a poverty country but um, there is some beautiful places there are you still doing your churchy so, bits am I still doing what I'm sorry your church bits you like I know you're very um, got a very good knowledge of the Bible well my knowledge is not what it used to be because I'm getting a little bit older but yeah I mean I still I still try to do everything I try to witness to people as much as I can like this house out in out in Painesville, you know, um, you know, I've given her Bible scriptures and things to put up in her house and pray a hedge of protection over her daughter and, and stuff like that. But um, it's a true poltergeist case too out there. Things are disappearing and transporting and all that kind of stuff. And um, I've, after I was researching about poltergeist activity, that you know, it deals a lot of poltergeist activity deals with fires. There's been two houses that burnt down on that property before this house, and then it also a lot of poltergeist activity deals with girls, and they have a little daughter named Oakley that um, it, it started affecting her first, and that's why they reached out to me. And I will believe children over an adult any day. So, but yeah, I'm still super churchy. I, I pray with people. Um, I give them Bible scripture and helping them. I mean, I don't think any kind of Bible scripture has ever hurt anybody. So I don't think prayer has ever hurt anybody. So anything positive, you know will help um and that and that's just how i believe and you know and if they don't want that then that's fine i respect them and we won't go that route but uh you know i'm there to help well no that's why i respect you emily because i know you that we've had um various discussions about religion before but you're willing to do it <laughs> you are willing to debate about it. you want you're not one of these that uh, uh you know it's strictly this I mean, you got your beliefs, obviously. No, strongly. No, and, and I, I respect anybody that has a, a deep belief in, in something or has taken the time to research things for themselves and, and things, even though it may not be what I agree with. But I still respect that person. But here's something, and I don't know if I should be talking about this, Mark, but atheists, atheists is ones that drive me 
absolutely nuts when they don't believe in anything. Now, how boring can you be? No, no. Uh, I don't believe in anything. Uh, I, you know, I don't believe in God, and, and I don't believe in anything, and we're just a, a, a shell of a person that lives here, and, and once we're dead, we, we're dead, and there's nothing else. That's not true. It is. I, I just... I can't get I can't get along with an atheist. And you also you're thinking, well, hang on a minute. So you're just saying we come along, we go get into the ground, we come worm food, and that's it. Goodbye, thank you, thank you. Feed the Goodbye. fish. Don't forget to feed the fish. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sorry if anybody's listening to this as atheist. I, 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 you know, I will love you from afar, and well, and, and, and things. But, but I just I just don't agree with them, and. and Tell, t- trying to tell people that they, that that, the, that what they believe in is not real, it doesn't exist, and, and trying to push their agenda onto other people. Uh, you know, I am a Christian and I love Jesus and I have a personal relationship with Him, but doesn't mean I push Him onto anybody and everybody. Now, back in the day when I had my spiritual pampers on, when I was a new Christian, yes, I did do that, and, and I could see where you know I pushed a lot of people away that, you know, that I was trying to help, but as I've gotten older and I've, and I've gotten a little bit wiser, not too much wiser, but a little bit wiser, I've learned to respect others and how they believe and, and try to try to take a little bit from everybody. Not everybody's 100% correct and um, and just know that I grow from my personal experience with Jesus. You know, I had a vision of him when I got saved and what I thought was five minutes was two and a half hours and so everybody has their own experience. And when they come to me and they talk about it, I respect somebody for that. Now, atheists will tell me none of that was real. And it was real. I'm well, sorry, I have family, I mean, members. I, I have family I, members that are atheists. So. I, I believe you, Emily, because as you know, we, we, but you know my history, so I can I understand it. I, re, I, read, I read a really good, interesting article once about a, um, alien sightings in the Bible. And it was like, it was going on about Jacob's, yeah, la- Jacob's ladder, um, yeah. the, par- the parting of the, the sea. And some of it, I thought, okay, they did a bit of research. Obviously, they're reinterpreting words, which we know happens quite a lot with all religious books, no matter mm-hmm. what who you believe, that, that you can take any scripture or any bit of word and you t- can take it out of context all the time I mean pe- people don't read books properly enough to when they see so- something they go oh no sorry mate you misquoted that it doesn't say uh, thou shall not da 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 it actually says this you know uh, you know, the Bible has certain layers, too. Like, I'm in this Bible college. There's three layers of studying the Bible. You can take the Bible at face value. You can take a Bible a little bit deeper than face value. And then you can take the Bible back to the roots, to, to the uh, her- hermeneutical, uh, philosophical, um, shoot, uh, Hebrew, Greek. And, and you can get different meanings for, from each, each face value that you take it at. Um, I personally, when I was in Bible college, and had to do a lot of research and study, which was probably the closest I've ever been to God uh, during that time, is that I would read Scripture, and then, you know, I would I would pray about it, and I'd be like, what do you want, God, what do you want me to get out of this, me personally? Now, now here's what I get from this Scripture personally. Now, how, how do you want me to express this to other people? And so that's how, that's how I came about with all my answers and, Believe me, my, my Bible college, I have a bachelor's in accounting and finance, have a bachelor's in business. This is not with my Bible college and a master's in teaching. And my Bible college is by far the hardest school I've went to. I have a bachelor's and master's in Christian education and a minor in theology. And um, I can't even tell you the papers and stuff I wrote in, in that school. It, it was it was very hard. I mean, straight A's. Yeah, and, and the, the biblical, I hate to say this now because this is, this was, gosh, um, gosh, this was 17 years ago, 16 years ago. I can't even tell you how many scriptures I memorized back then. And, and I, I know scripture now, but I just can't tell you where it's at. It's probably says still I, somewhere. I, but if someone was to quote something, you'll go, oh, no, sorry. And actually it says this bit here. 
I, I didn't hear the last part of that, Mark. I'm sorry, you cut out. That's okay. I like. I, 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 I normally do this bit when they beat and say you cut. I go. <laughs> We go, are you still on? No. Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah. Uh-uh. Now, um, uh, um do, do you uh-uh. still find Facebook easier to do? Because I know they keep changing the way you can do live broadcasts. They keep mucking it around a little bit. Obviously, you know, I keep my show a bit simplified, and so, mo- most times it works. I mean, occasionally, I did a show today, and it went all right, but he said the sound wasn't loud enough, but it was working okay my end, but hey, that happens. As you know yourself, yeah. when you do many a show, sometimes it just, yeah. and you go, okay, I'll just do a record. <laughs> Sounds very scary finding eleven bodies on your property. Eleven bodies and eight of them eight of them were identified, so still to this day the other bodies haven't been identified and then they tied him. Herb ended up running to Canada and he shot himself in a hotel. He committed suicide. But um they ended up tying him back to a bunch of bodies that were found on the interstate. I think they called him the Interstate seventy five or something serial killer or something like that back then. 
And I haven't read about him in a long time, but I, I did a lot of research on him back probably like, I don't know, seven, eight years ago and, and things. But, um, you know, he got to investigate that, that place. He has a video up on YouTube. He has really, really interesting uh, EVPs and uh, ghost box responses uh, from that location that kind of confirmed what happened there. So um, it, it's, it's going to be a good show Friday. You should do a serial killer special. I want to. I had, um, I had, oh, Jeff Mudgett. He was one of the top ten people I ever wanted to interview on my show in April. He, he's the great, great grandson of H.H. H. Holmes. And uh, he had the TV show on History Channel called American Ripper, where they believe that H.H. H. Holmes is Jack the Ripper. I believe he is. And, uh, so, oh, my gosh, when he told me he was going to be on my show, I cried. I was so excited. I don't think Jeff knows how passionate I am about that storyline. And I don't think he knows, like, during the show uh, American Ripper, like, there's an episode where they took, because there was, like, 10 to 15 witnesses of Jack the Ripper. Like, people saw this guy. So they took the descriptions of these people and what they saw. And then they stuck it, they digitized it and drew it out. And then they stuck it next to the picture of H.H. H. Holmes. Let me tell you this. I was standing in the middle of my bedroom, jumping up and down, watching this episode with my hands on my mouth. Like, I could not believe what I saw. And to this day, it's probably, in my opinion, out of all the shows that I watch that are creepy and unusual and all that, it's probably the best episode I've ever seen on TV. I've never, I've never heard of that. American Ripper. They only did one season. And at the end of the season, they were um, digging up H.H. H. Holmes's grave. And um, so that's where they ended it. And it, it, History Channel didn't do season two, but Jeff keeps, keeps, you know, doing little bombs on Facebook saying something else is in the works, something else is coming up. So I'm anxious to see what's happening. And I'm hoping that when something finally comes, comes to pass or something finally gets, you know, approved, that he'll come back on the show. So uh, here's something sort of interesting that Jeff told me. Here's something interesting Jeff told me that I didn't know. One of H.H. H. Holmes, I think it was actually his first. I can't remember exactly what Jeff said that night. It, this was after the show aired. We talked for a moment. Uh, the first person, or the first female, I guess, maybe, that H.H. H. Holmes murdered, was, her name was Emily, and she was a stenographer. My name's Emily, and I'm a stenographer. <laughs> <laughs> So, you're, you're thinking, okay. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay, maybe that's why I like H.H. Holmes. I don't know. It was weird when he said that, so. Yes, it's a different something I'm going to look up. I've, I've honestly never heard of that. I've heard of the female Jack Ripper story. It was could have possibly been a woman. I've heard it, it could have been I, I don't a woman. I don't think it was a woman. Back then, it was a doctor. They they said it was a doctor. He had he cut like a doctor, and they wouldn't let let allow women to be doctors back then. But um, I I uh, it, it's just interesting because there was two places. Here's 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 how I I think too. There's two places back then that you could get um, uh, surgeons like scalpels and surgical instruments. There was a company in the United States, and there was a company over in Europe um, that you could get these things. The the you know the importing system back then, and the tariffs and all that kind of stuff that they had in place, it was very expensive to ship anything to the United States, and vice versa. So H. H. Holmes had one of these kits from Europe, and how did he get the from your estate, he had to be over there, and he was a doctor, and so he was over there. He had to get his utensils somehow from there, and then ship it back here. Well, also they have the ship, the shipping records of or the uh, travel records of these people going overseas. Well, they found H. H. Holmes's record going overseas during the time that Jack the Ripper was over there. That was doing the murders and in, in uh, the Whitechapel area or whatever. And um, so the things that happened here in the United States, the murders that happened here, died down. But then when he came back, see, I think he went over there to 
to, um, I don't know, to work on his craft of murdering people and get cleaner with it. And so then when he came back over to the United States, that's when he was in Chicago and he built the murder castle. And then when the World's Fairs happened, he killed, I can't even tell you how many people he killed. But you need to look up the murder castle of Chicago. Well, definitely going to look that up. I'm definitely fascinating me. I might, I'm definitely going to cover that on my show at some point. Um, do, 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 uh, covered your bit. I'm just trying to think what we've covered. Give a show. We know where people know where to find you on Facebook. Obviously, you can mention it now. Oh yeah, you can follow. Please follow us on Facebook because that's where we do our lives. But you, uh, our it's Facebook dot com backslash paranormal ff. And then, you know, you can always go to our website. I have links straight to the Facebook Lives every Friday night on the website, on the main page there. And that's www.wtfricklive.org. And um, I'm on Instagram, Twitter, SoundCloud. If you want to listen to any of the EVPs I talked about tonight, they're on SoundCloud.com uh, backslash Frick and A-N-D Frack Paranormal. What else? YouTube channel, but I don't have a name on that. You can just look me up, Emily Men's House Stakely, on YouTube. But Mark's been a guest on my show. We did the Valentine Day, and we did Christmas last year. Scrooges it was good. Yeah, they got quite good responses, uh, didn't they? Yeah, I've gotten. I've not really got any kind of negative response except this guy that was on my. Um, here, here's the deal. I, I, I finally had some haters message me about a guest. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say his name because actually it was a really, really good interview and about stuff that's going on in his personal life. Now, the gentleman that they were talking about to me, he's been on a TV show and I don't know what's going on with that TV show. I heard the whole TV show period was canceled and it has been canceled. And, um, he, but he has been professional to me. He's not ever gone out of his way to make me feel uncomfortable. He's not done anything to make me feel uncomfortable. But he did some things in his personal life that he probably shouldn't have done, especially after you get on TV. So, you know, I have people messaging me on LinkedIn. I have people messaging me on Facebook. I have people messaging me on Instagram. And the guy still came on my show because, you know, it's not my business. That's what he does in his personal life. He, his personal life does not affect me whatsoever, and I'm not here to talk about his personal life. I'm here to talk about the things that happened to him, how he got on TV, what he thought about being on a TV show, and that was the it, and the results from it, and that was it. So, you know, all these people that go so hard to try to get somebody, you know, off a, just a podcast, and this is the first time that I, I dealt with this, is ridiculous. And I'll tell you this, a couple of the people that messaged me had some really bad, sketchy history themselves and has conned people and has frauded people in the paranormal and has been in jail for it. And I said, you know what, if it, it personally affects me, if he makes me feel uncomfortable or she, it could be a she, makes me ever feel uncomfortable, then no, they won't be on my show. But he, he's, he, he in this case, has been nothing but professional. I talked to him on the phone and everything, and he, he was a great person to talk to, and it was a great, great uh, interview. So, well, sometimes you, on. sometimes some people, well, I, I've been through some naughty stuff in my past, but sometimes you learn from it. Sometimes you learn not to be that person again. All right, sometimes it may come back to haunt you, that past, mm-hmm. but then you can see, be honest about it, say, hey, you know, that was me back when I'm 20. I'm not. I'm not that person anymore. Or, or two. There's always two sides to every story. Yeah, you know, and he and and I'm not going to sit there and ask him questions about that. Per- it's his personal life. Now, if it was the paranormal stuff, yes, I'd ask him questions. But it wasn't. It dealt with. It, it dealt with a very personal issue, and it, it and that's none of my business. Exactly. And I mean, he, you know. So I'm glad he came on. I really appreciate it coming on, and and I believe he's going to come on in the future too. Uh, uh, probably after the first of the year, and, and talk about because there's going to be another TV show at his location this fall. And unfortunately, I'm totally booked, or I'd have had him come on sooner to talk about it. But um, it, it, as far as far as the interview went, it was it was a really good interview. So I'm glad he came on. I'm glad I didn't cancel it over what somebody said or how somebody feels. 
and I'm glad that I, I feel in my heart that I did the right thing. So uh, it was it was really a really great time, and, it, and again the hour went by so fast. So. Oh, I'm glad you don't get. I mean, sometimes I get I organise guests, and you've probably had this happen to you. And you you turn up, and it, uh, well, in my case, it's like sometimes it's like one o'clock in the morning, and uh, I've I've arranged it. I've talked don't talk to them, and they say, oh yeah, I'll be on the show, da, 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 da. and then you are the ten minutes later. Mm-hmm. Oh, what's happening? What's going on? Where are they? Yeah, and then they think, oh well, I'll give it five more minutes, and I'll go into bed because <laughs> I'm not waiting around no more. I used to. <laughs> I, I don't know if you hear. I don't know if you hear this. Knocking on wood. Um, I, I have not had a guest do that to me yet. Um, I think the pressures of being on Facebook Live might, might uh, diminish that some. I think that once they know that they're going to be on camera and people are going to see them, and, and this is an expected date, and I've been promoting it for a week. Um, I've been I've some as I promote it more than a week. Um, then pressure for them to show up is, is there, unless there's a true emergency that happens, like Mr. Keith Linder. You know, his mom had emergency surgery and he had to fly to Texas. So, um, but, you know, I haven't had that problem yet. I'm sure But if so, that's why I have a co-host. And that's why we still go live. And that's why we still have a good show because it's just me and my co-host. Yeah, I, I like the way and, and, and we goof off and, and, and carry on. And, you know, sorry we don't have a guest tonight. So you're just going to get us. And that's probably our, our last Last week I had 158 live viewers, which is good because we're growing. And uh, it would probably drop down to like four viewers if it was just me and Jay. But, uh, you know, that's that's why I like doing this and to have people, my co-hosts there, just in case something does happen like that, then, you know, we, we can just play off each other and talk about paranormal things or just talk about anything really. Oh God! We, you, you and me have talked about so many weird and bizarre things. Yeah. <laughs> if people ever listen to it, they probably think, "What the hell?" Especially when we were talk the Valentine thing what? about the 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 fongs and all the. How, how, how about you singing? Oh, you're singing telegrams. Yeah, they're singing telegrams, and uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I think. You know, I, I, I like the fun element. I like to, well, I like the live bit. I like doing live because, A, it can go completely balls up, which it happened to me today. I, yeah. I, I, I plan to go and I, I do blog, this goes out on blog, blog talk radio. And um, I organize, and my mates put, put the plan in. I've put the phone up, did a bit. And, of course, I'm talking to the guest. And of course, I forgot that I'm talking to him on, on my um, WhatsApp because that's the only okay. way you could, could do it. And then of course, I thought, oh shit! And I had to take it off and do another episode. <laughs> uh, and then, and then I think, oh, we did it. I did it. So I did a pre-record with him, and then three things went wrong. And then, oh, no. and then, and then the volume wasn't very great. So we plan to redo it tomorrow. <laughs> At six o'clock, he's a man called Scott Longham, and he does a City of Paranormal group. So um, a lot uh-huh. of lo- London-based uh, ghosts and things like that. And he's very into well, pa- and he's very into para unity. Yeah, like we, th- th- this shouldn't be all this bullshit. Like you, like you said. Oh, that, uh, well, listen, I'm not. I'm not into para unity anymore. Uh, I tried that. I did that. I just do my own stuff and and wish everybody else for the best because. I'm telling you, it is a dog-eat-dog world in any department that you work in in life. And you will always have the people that want unity. You always have the people that don't want unity and or, you know, compete with each other. So I try to stay in my own little cocoon and kind of wish everybody the best. I think that's the best thing to do, isn't it? Best thing to do. And obviously people will look at your logo. It's a nice new logo that you created yourself, which I thought was very cool. I think it looked like you with the sunglasses. And it reminded me of a, ca- a lady over here who used to do a travel show. I can't remember her name. It, I think it's Madeline or Magdalene. Anyway, she was had dark, really dark hair, and every show she wore, wore 
worked on, she would wear dark glasses. And she was sort of like, um, what you call a 60s hippie chick. You know, very laid back sort of attitude with interviews like, hey, you know. Uh, well, well, send them my picture over, see if they need a new new person to help with their show. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, I don't know. I can't, I just, you know, took, took my uh, picture and I have a background in graphic design on a degree, but I've done graphic design for a long time now, freelance and marketing and advertising. Now my, I do have a degree in marketing and advertising, but, um, I just wanted it to be cartoonish in nature, and I took my picture and uh, made it, uh, digitized it, and made it a cartoon-looking kind of character, which was too cartoony for me, and then I took an overlay of a comic book uh, thing that I purchased and put it over there, and I kind of liked that, so then I, it, there's like uh, so many layers to that logo, I can't even tell you, it's probably like 40, 50 some layers to that, and finally edited it to where I could get it on one image, and it came out. I, I'm pleased with it for now. I don't know if that'll change in the future or not, but, uh, you know, it has WT uh, on one side and uh, F with Rick. <laughs> what, the, what the F, Rick? Uh, <laughs> I suppose a lot of people have actually finally got what you're meaning, because, yeah. and then uh, but people go, oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> What the F, you know, like the F-U-C-K word, which I don't like to say anyway, but what the frick, because my team is frickin' frack paranormal, so I wanted to tie that into them too, because, you know, I, I have teams in Ohio and Florida now, and I have uh, I have some people reaching out to me from Georgia, and I actually have a, a couple of people from Netherlands uh, reaching out, wanting to start Ooh, their cool. own frickin' frack team. So yeah, it, it's growing, and, and um, I'm really pleased that I never thought this would happen, uh, and in all, the, you know, I'm not discriminatory against guys or anybody like that, but it's, it's female based. Uh, we are really, we really truly are teammates, but we've really truly become friends and we support each other, not just in the paranormal things, uh, but in our personal lives as well. And, um, you know, I have a couple girls that's gone through a really, really hard time uh, this past year, and we've really been there for each other and call each other, and it's, it's, it's been really, a positive growing experience so far. So uh, I'm thankful that God, the right people in my life at the right time. And we all believe differently too. You know, um, not everybody's a Christian like me and, 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 you know, some of the other people believe, believe in, um, you know, the pagan lifestyle and stuff like that. And that we've all come together to, for our cause and, and we truly do support each other. So um, I love it. I've loved every minute of it. And, and I've helped, I've, I'm not a know-it-all. I, I, I see some of these people get on these shows and and or some of these podcast uh, hosts, um, and, and they sit on here and they lecture. It ends up being a lecturing, is what it ends up being. And you hear more about the host than you do the guest. And I will. I I'm not a know-it-all. I will learn something off everybody as as long as I'm alive. That's how I'll be. And I don't get, I don't have guests come on the show and me talk about myself all the time. I have guests come on the show so they can talk about themselves and I can learn something from them. Talking so, of uh, your health, is it a little bit better now? I know you've had some, I know you've got some issues which we won't talk about. But um, are you a little bit better in yourself now? Health-wise? Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? I'm sorry, you cut out. Yeah, health wise, I'm doing a lot better. Yes, yes, I'm exercising and and eating better and, and things like that. Yeah, I'm doing I'm doing a lot better now. Um, I'll just tell you, I've had cancer twice, and um, uh, I'm in total re- remission from that. And uh, it, it was caught early on both occasions too. And and you know, just the stressors in life too. I've I've gone through several hard seasons this year, but you know, good things come out of hard times. And you can't ever have a victory unless you go through something hard. So, you know, I, I am trying to look more of, on a positive outlook in the situations that I've been in, plus therapy. I love my therapist. <laughs> I highly recommend a therapist to anybody. <laughs> and I know your son is yeah. very good at American football. Oh, my 
little boy. Yeah, we're getting ready to start football back up. He's doing football conditioning right now, and he's been exercising and doing sit-ups and all that stuff. And you know what? I, I would like to get down on the floor with him, but I'm not doing that. I'm glad he. I'm glad he. he I run. I will run with him. I'm glad that he's got. He's very active. I'm glad he's got that because he he, uh, he was a very proud mum when he um uh, did he he won something I can't remember. Oh, he's yeah, he's um he's quarterback for his football team. Uh, he has a really good arm on him, and um and then he he's pretty good little basketball player too. I I could have played college basketball. His daddy played college basketball. My brother played college basketball. So basketball runs in the genes. I was kind of hoping he'd like basketball a little bit more than football, but that's not the case so far. But he's he's um, all the teams he's been on they've they've been champions. So um, which is great and awesome. But I think you know it's good to lose too. Oh so, yes, um, I, I, I think the important thing about losing they win everything. But if they lose. You've got to learn what from losing. I think that's the only way you you get a better person. Yeah. You you become. Yeah. Well, you know that's what I was saying. I'm hoping that they win, but then there's a part of me this year like I hope that they lose too, because it's time for him to learn what losing feels like and 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 try to analyze on on what he can do or his team can do. To to make it a better game or, or a winning situation. Plus, when you're in a losing situation, too, you know, it makes you strategize more. Like, what? I played sports all my life, so I, under, I understand that part. And I'm thankful for my sports because it taught me to be a leader and it taught me to be organized and it taught me to work as a team. So um, there's good things that come out of sports. I just hate football, though. Makes me a nervous wreck. I can't. I can't imagine if he's playing football in senior year in high school, or in high school, middle school, or high school. Because those boys, shoo, I'm going to need Valium or something to watch him because I'll be a nervous wreck. But he'll get hurt. I just pause. Well, Emma, you've we're coming near to the end of the bit. As you said, the hours have gone flying by, and you yes. said that you may have a special announcement that you've going to say. Yes, I'll just go ahead and say this because I've already made up my mind. I want to be a part of this, and I'm just waiting for them to send the contract for me to sign it because I've, I've had co- several conversations. But uh, for, what the Frick Live is going to be part of the Paranormal Warehouse on wow. Facebook. That yeah. is that so, is cool. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. Um, uh, gonna, uh, there's some advertising things that i got to do with them, too. And as soon as I get the the agreement and everything over to me, and I will double-check the agreement, but I am, you know, if the guy's truthful in, in his conversations and stuff with me, then I, I believe him. But I'm going to read over that agreement, and I'm really hoping, truly hoping by August, uh, uh, What the Frick Live will be part of the Paranormal Warehouse. So... I think they have over five hundred and some thousand followers on their Facebook page. Well, but, uh, and any development is a good development in my book. It is. It is. I feel good about. This. And, uh, I'm excited about the future, and uh, 2019 uh, is going to be a good year. So the rest of the year, anyway, we're halfway over. We're over halfway over 2019. That's crazy. Well, obviously, unfortunately, I have to end the Mark, show. Mark, you're going to come on, you're gonna have to come on my show. I'm going to. I'll, I'll, I'll just give me a date, and I'll turn up. And if you need a, okay. if you ever need a co-host, and you're thinking, where can I go? I've got no one to turn up. Just ask yeah, me. Yeah. I'll do a little bit. I don't mind. My wife I, might. I, I don't. My wife doesn't mind like, me getting out at one o'clock in the morning, but hey... <laughs> Um, so, uh, before we, I go, and you always know what happens because you've been on my show so many times, you know me quite well, hopefully, um, uh, I would like you to, I normally like to do a unique sign-off before I sign off the show. Now, what is going to be your unique sign-off, Emily? I'm sorry, Mark, you cut out again. I'm gonna, I will, I'll repeat myself, because I like repeating okay. myself, because that's what I like doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's all right. Um, I was joking. Um, da, 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 da. I, before I, we end the show, I, I normally like to ask the guests to do a unique sign-off, because I like to do a unique sign-off for the end of the show. What would be your unique sign-off? My unique sign-off? Oh, my gosh. Now, I'm 
Now, you, you should have prepared me for this so I could sit there and think about I it. I don't long. prepare anybody for I this. Don't, I, I don't, uh, just what the frick are you thinking, man? Okay? It's but, like, <laughs> just kidding, that's my show. No, 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 I like that bit. I like that bit. Don't, don't worry, I like that. Don't worry, I, I like that. Okay, what the, what I like, the frick I like are it. you thinking, Mark? You have me come on here and you want me to have a unique ending. What the frick, man? Because... I, this, that, I keep that bit in because it throws people every time. Always get, get people, and it proves to people that we have actually had a proper real conversation and not edited it all together <laughs> at, at, at some point. Oh, no. this, is, this, is, this is super real. And uh, Mark, you're my, one of my favorite uh, podcasters and hosts. And... Uh, I really enjoy. I've always tell people that they need to come on your show because you always have really great questions and and you always put us on the spot on things that we're not expecting, just like the ending of the show. So. Right. Oh, here's mine for you, Emily. I know a lady who, okay. who's from Kentucky and talks really weird, but I don't mind because she fit, understands me as well. And she used to well, be a frick and a frack. But now she is. What the frick? If you don't get this, then you don't know what it means. You may not understand. Because you see, there was used to be a perfume on the land that says F-U-S-C-U-K. And once upon a time, when I was a, a, a fan of punk rock, my friend, my friend got done by a policeman because we had a, a T-shirt that said something different to that. But we won't say that name. Because Emily doesn't like that word. <laughs> so, it's good night for me. I don't like that. I, I don't like that word either. <laughs> and, 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 and we, and we, and we finish the show. And one day, I hope, again, we'll have a, sh- a talk on her show. And hopefully, I'll be a co-host on her show one time. Yeah. So, thank you. Good night. And goodbye. Good thank night. you for Thank listening. you, Mark.